Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena episode 44 for Wednesday, May 6th, 2015. Your apps. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com, the online learning platform with over 3,000 on demand video courses to help you strengthen your business, technology, and creative skills. For a free 10 day trial, visit lynda.com slash arena. That's L Y N D A.com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It may come as no surprise that among all the emails and app submissions that I receive for this show and my other show, All About Android, a number of them come from fans who also happen to develop their own apps. I love knowing that developers are watching my shows because it tells me that they find something valuable in the content that I produce, something that speaks to them. And I'm not a developer, so sometimes I simply don't know whether I'm giving developers the deep information they crave on the subject. I was scanning through the emails sent to arena at twit.tv and found a small collection of apps by you guys. So I picked a few of the ones that really stood out, spent some time with them, and uh, that's what we have here. Let's uh, take a look at a few apps. You may not have heard of these yet, but I'm, I assure you, others will as a result of this week's episode. This week's hodgepodge of apps is created by you. Let's take a look. First, let's take a look at an app that will keep things interesting on your home screen. Bryce submitted his app. It's called Tap Deck, and it's currently in beta mode. So you'll need to follow the instructions inside the app to gain access. Don't worry, doesn't take too long. Tap Deck is a live wallpaper that pulls in new images for your desktop from a variety of popular sources. When you first sign in, you'll be asked to mark a few random images as the kinds that you like. That will begin the process of determining what to serve you in the future. It's very smart. And after a brief onboarding process, you'll have a fancy image on your home screen. Don't like it? Just double tap that image and a new one loads. Want to know more about that image? You simply swipe up in the dead space on your home screen and you'll see expanded info on that image. You'll know where the content was pulled from with a link that takes you directly there. You'll also get a bunch of extra detail around that image depending on its source. For instance, an image pulled from IMDb will populate info around which movie it's from, who starred in that movie, even a way to watch the trailer for the film on YouTube. Reddit images import the comments from the Reddit thread. Images of locations pulled from Wikipedia will surface a Google map of that area. And finally, if you like that image enough to favor it, just tap the heart and it's added to your likes list. Then you can load it again later. And all of your previous images are available in the history section. Of course, you can tweak the experience a little bit in settings, namely if you want to change up the gestures that are used to change the wallpaper or pull up that expanded info, you can do that. Check out Tap Deck for free in the Play Store. Next up, I got a message from Geeko in chat. His real name is Guillaume and his app is called Quick Lyric. It automates the process of presenting lyrics to whatever song you happen to be listening to on your device. Its strength lies in its lightweight approach. This isn't a Swiss army knife style app. Quick Lyric does one thing and does it well without being obtrusive. With Quick Lyric running in the background on your device, the app will automatically capture the metadata of the songs you play in any number of music apps on your device. Google Play Music, Spotify, Power Amp, Gone Mad, Groove Shark, and many more. From there, Quick Lyric will download to your device the lyrics for the currently playing song, and it'll get a notification that you can tap to bring you to those on a whim. It's not in your face, just kind of sitting in the background for when you feel like you want to see it. Any lyrics that you absolutely love are easily stored on your device permanently by tapping the save icon. And there's also a setting to automatically save all lyrics to your device if you want them all there. That helps for accessing lyrics when you're offline. In fact, you can tap this button to download the lyrics to all the songs in your local or cloud library. And depending on the size, that'll take a while, but it's possible with Quick Lyric. 
When a new song begins, Quick Lyric can automatically refresh to show the lyrics for the new tune, or you can do it manually if automatic detection doesn't happen, but it works for me every time. Search functionality allows you to use Quick Lyric as a searchable database of lyrics from both Lyric Wiki and Genius, which is formerly known as Rap Genius. As you can see, Quick Lyric has a simple material design and theming engine. It doesn't pretend to be anything more than what it is at its core, a streamlined, lightweight, but totally effective Lyric app for modern Android devices. Find Quick Lyric for free with no ads whatsoever right now in the Play Store. This one goes out to all you developers out there. In fact, the other folks who contributed apps to this episode might get some use out of Perfect Screenshots Ultra. Mike DePaul sent in this one, and it looks to be a great resource for developers that are looking to make their Play Store pages and online marketing in general a bit more customized. Instead of posting a flat screenshot of your app, why not frame it inside the device of your choice? And really, anyone on the social web can benefit too in much the same way by dressing up what would otherwise be a simple screenshot. When you first launch Perfect Screenshots Ultra, you'll want to head into the Devices section to pick the devices that you want to frame your screenshots with. It's a huge list with most of the modern devices that you'd expect in there. Select and then download the image assets for those devices. This saves you from downloading a huge app file when you install the app, allowing you to pick and choose the ones that are important to you. Now select the device you wish to frame with. You tap this button to navigate to the screenshot image of your app on your drive, and it drops into that frame. Now you can customize everything for a more professional look. This overflow menu gives you a few screen tweaks like adding a glare on the screen, a shadow below the device, and even a drop shadow behind the device. You can also tweak the screen margins that are set inside the frame. Frames gives you different color and style options that a particular device is known for having. And background deals with the empty space behind the device frame. Here you can set it to a solid color and those are actually chosen from the dominant colors within your screenshot or pull in an enlarged version of your screenshot with a few blurring options so it isn't so distracting. And when you like what you have, just tap the save button and it's saved to your screenshots folder and ready to share. I did find the app a little slow to render at times, but if you're patient, it can make creating solid images for your app a bit easier than other more manual options. Find perfect screenshot for free with an ultra version for 99 cents in the Play Store. All right, cool, cool stuff. This is the beauty of app development for mobile. There may be you know, other apps that do these things in different ways. There's always room for a new interpretation or a refined, simplified design. Again, this is the theme that you know I want to revisit regularly. So I encourage you, the app developer fan of this show, to definitely send in your apps to arena at twit.tv. Make sure to let me know who you are, what motivated you to develop your app, and uh, I'll keep it in a nice, neat pile to refer to the next time I do an episode like this. And I want to do it more often, so I appreciate that. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. I love these guys. It's lynda.com. Lynda is for problem solvers, for the curious, for people who want to make things happen. Maybe you want to take better photos. You want to create an Android app, master Excel, uh, sharpen your Photoshop skills. Lynda.com has everything you need to feed your curious mind. Some of the new Lynda.com courses that we recommend here are developing Android uh, apps, essential training. There's Google App Engine, essential training, uh, developing executive presence, and up and running with Lightroom 6 and Lightroom CC. There are also new installments of the Code Clinic series covering C, R, and JavaScript. Personally, I make no qualms about it. I'm a music fan and I love the music tutorials and sit downs with professional mix engineers. It's just really well produced and I learn a lot when I watch those. With a lynda.com membership, you can watch and learn from top experts who are passionate about teaching, stream thousands of video courses on demand and learn on your own schedule. You can learn at your own pace basically. Courses are structured so you can watch them from start to finish or consume them in bite-sized pieces. Of course, browsing each course transcript is easy. You can follow along and search for an answer, skip right to a particular point of the video. You can take notes as you go, refer to those later, download tutorials, watch them on the go, and that's including access on your Android or iOS device. You can create and save playlists of courses that you want to watch to customize your learning path or share with friends, colleagues, 
and team members. Your lynda.com membership gives you unlimited access to training on hundreds of topics, all for one flat rate. Whether you're looking to become an expert, you're passionate about a hobby, or you just want to learn something new, I want you to visit lynda.com slash arena. And you can sign up for your free 10-day trial. That's L-Y-N-D-A dot com slash arena. We thank them for their support. And of course, when you're supporting Twit sponsors, you're supporting uh, Twit itself. So thank you for that. All right. This week's big app lets you stream all the little tiny bits of your daily life in, a, in, in an ephemeral sort of way. If I can talk, let's take a look. If you've been looking for a way to stream live video of everything you do throughout the course of any given day, then you've probably been sitting there all butthurt because the two main providers of such services, Meerkat and Periscope, both launched on iOS with no Android version out of the gate. And up until a few weeks ago, all Android users had was a version of Meerkat that merely watched iOS users using the service to its fullest. Now you too can get in on the action with Meerkat Beta. Emphasis on the beta, because the app is definitely buggy, but it's off to a good start, so cut them some slack. When you launch Meerkat, you're shown a hot list of Meercasters currently streaming live from their device. You can tap into any video stream, and you'll connect immediately by means of your Twitter ID to that video stream. That person can actually see you when you connect. That's thanks to the Twitter hooks. And if you wish, you can fire off a chat to them directly inside the app do keep in mind that those chats actually happen by means of an at reply using your Twitter account. So some of your followers on Twitter might find you a bit spammy with no real context if you're verbose during your Meerkat viewing session. Thankfully, you can turn off the Twitter feature by sliding tweet this comment to off. Once you feel inspired enough to start your own live video feed, you can type in a small summary of what you'll be doing and then either schedule that stream for a future date and time, or simply stream right now. Once all systems are go, you'll begin to see little avatars appear as your viewer count grows. This little chat area down here keeps you in the know on what your viewers are saying to you while you live cast. You can chat back if just talking with your mouth won't do the trick. There's front facing camera support, and that means people can see you and you can see them at the same time when you look at your device. But Meerkat does support hot switching between both cameras on the device. And that flash button down there turns on your camera's flash to illuminate the scene and drain your battery. It's kind of a trade off. Meerkat streams your video live, but doesn't archive after the fact. So when you're done, there's no trace of the content you just created. The developers may not have launched with Android support, but they certainly worked hard to get Android users in on the fun relatively fast. Just forgive a bit of bugginess while they iron things out. Find Meerkat beta in the Play Store for free. Again, Keep in mind, it's a beta release. It'll only get stronger. Not to mention, Meerkat actually just today announced a new developer API that will allow third-party developers to tie services into Meerkat in a more official way. So you can probably expect some cool new things coming soon to the Meerkat universe. I had a lot of fun playing around with it. I definitely encountered bugs, but uh, I think it has a lot of potential and they'll improve it quickly, I'm sure. Uh, as always, I love hearing from you, particularly you know, as relates to this week. Developers, uh, also fans of this show, if you guys can get in touch with me and send me your apps, I really appreciate it. I will include it in a future episode. Send that to arena at twit.tv. There's also a subreddit for the show where I post categories and ask you to tell me about your favorite apps, why you love them so much. I also have one in there, in fact, for developers to post their apps to. If you have input on some of your favorite apps or your app in general, just go to Android App Arena reddit.com and you can share them with me there you can find me on google plus i talk all about android there from time to time i also host a live viewing party of each week's episode of android app arena i'll be on set to answer any questions you might have about the apps in the show really anything in the android world that happens every wednesday at 4 30 p.m pacific following tech news tonight at live.twit.tv and if you miss that live taping you can catch each week's episode later that night on the side on the site and in the feeds and you can just go to twit.tv slash arena to find all that information. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena. <laughs>